First, let me give honor to God. Yes. And to our pastor, Pastor Brawley, and to all of the ministers and officers of St. Paul. First, let me thank God for another day. All right. A day that we neither earned nor deserved. A lot of us jump up in the morning like God owed us another day. Or like we did something to earn another day. But I don't care how holy you are or how saved you appear to us. Well, All of us have done enough wrong that any night we sleep, if God didn't bless us, Come on, son. None of us will see the next morning. <laughs> so every day is a gift from God. Amen. I don't care when I wake up in the morning what the weather is like. Folk be traveling, me checking the weather. I don't rarely check the weather. Because every day is a good day. Good hot day, good cold day, good rainy day. Day, good clear day, every day above ground. That's it. It's a good it's a day. Good day. Cause every day I wake up, I realize that somehow while I slept, a divine decision was made. Glory. To look beyond my faults Amen. and supply my needs. So I try to show God that I'm grateful that He gave me that what He didn't owe me. But gave it to me anyhow. Then I'm glad to be here at St. Paul's on the 97th anniversary. 97 years. An amazing history. Very few things in our community can we say lasted 97 years and Amen. still growing. And still viable. And still relevant. And I have received, uh, and I take very seriously anything I receive from Pastor Brawley. He's one of the people in this city and state that has earned the regard and respect of everybody. Yes, sir. Yeah. said I've been preaching since I was a youngster so I know and have known many of our great and not so great preachers well and I confess in St. Paul most preachers I don't like because most of them are performers there you go and not producers but if there's one that is a producer and a performer and that has been able to master development. There's no minister I respect more in my life than David Brown. Amen. On one of my staff members, Sons in Social Justice, Reverend Marshall said that I got a call from Vice President Harris, and she's going to be on my show today from Atlanta. And, um, so Reverend Stephen Marshall works with us, said, you want me to call Brawley because you're going to have to fly out right after your radio show. I said, well, let me call him. And I called him to tell him I couldn't be here, but when he said hello, I said, I'll be there. <laughs> I don't even know why I called. But I cannot not be here. One, as I said, it's the 97th anniversary. But second, to celebrate his birthday. Yes. And to remind him when he calls me, old man, that you're right, maybe about 15, 14 years behind. But every time. I have to count up one. You got to count up one with me. 
but give a hand to our leader, our pastor. I want you to turn briefly to the book of Judges. Seventh chapter. Somebody out there want to be judged this morning. <laughs> Book of Judges, seventh chapter. Let's go to the third verse and come down. I said fifth verse, but let me start at three. Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall I go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whoso, whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lap put in their hand in their mouths, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lacked, will I save you and deliver you from the Midianites into thy hand. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. What a useful thought on this 97th anniversary. Ready to serve. Ready to serve. One of the things that we often do is we go through historic analysis without context. We talk a lot about Dr. King and Fannie Lou Hamer and giants in our history, but we rarely talk about what they had to go through in their time. All right, sir. Many young people that I meet today that come and talk to me and know me on TV or know me on radio don't know what I've been through to get where I got. <laughs> and I say that because in order for you to get where you dream of being, you got to be willing to pass the test in order to get there. Too many of us want a college degree on the kindergarten test. The higher the level, the harder the, the harder test. Yes, sir. One of the things I was blessed, my father left when I was young, and uh, my mother uh, brought me around great preachers, and because of my youth activism, I met James Brown, the godfather of soul music, and he became like a father to me. And I remember in his latter years, Dr. Brawley, I would go out sometimes, see him on the road just to spend time with him a day or two and come back to whatever I was involved with. And toward his latter years, we were walking backstage. He was headed to the stage to perform. And he stopped one minute. He'd always talk to me like a father to a son. He said, Reverend, look, up, look over there. I said, yeah, I look. He said, what's that? I said, a wall. He said, what's on the wall? I said, a ladder. He said, uh, how many steps to that ladder? I said, I counted. I didn't know where this was going, but I counted. <laughs> I said, look like 23. He said, 23 steps, huh? I said, yeah. He said, it will take 23 steps, pulling up, pulling up 23 times, pressure, going up, going up, going up, to get to the top of that ladder. I said, yeah. He said, but you only need, when you get to the top, one step back to hit the ground. <laughs> he said, son, remember on your way up, 
Come on here. To don't make a step back. Because your climb can be erased by you not continuing the struggle, but getting elated in the fact that you've risen up so high. And so many of us are intoxicated when we get to a certain place that we forget what we went through to get there. All right, sir. And then so many of us get rattled with where we are. Somebody here today, somebody watching, is in the middle of some difficulty, but sometimes God will put difficulty on you to prepare you for where he's going to exalt you. Amen. When I used to get a problem, I would grieve. I would wonder why am I going through this? But now when I face a challenge, I almost get happy, brother, because God wouldn't test me if he wasn't getting ready to promote me. I used to get upset with folks that I'd been tight with, friends with, would somehow leave me or betray me. But all I've gotten, I've learned that sometimes God will separate people. Come on, sir. Because they were not what he needed for you for the next dimension he's about to bring you to. Some folk are just seasonal. But seasons change. And you don't need to wear a summer suit in the winter. And you can't bring summer friends through the cold winters. We get ready to go through this election, 17 days away. People telling me all over the country, I've been on tour, saying, well, I don't know if the country is ready for a black woman. I said the country wasn't ready for us to come to the front of the bus. Country wasn't ready for us to go to the best schools. Country ain't never been ready. We got the country ready. Question ain't is the country ready. Question is, are we ready? How can you doubt if we could elect a black woman? When we elected and re-elected a black man and we couldn't even pronounce his name right. But that's why I took this text for St. Paul's anniversary. Gideon, God called to lead the Israelites against the Midianites. Gideon was an unlikely person. Didn't come out of a royal family, didn't have a huge background. In fact, when the angel came and told him God had chosen him, he argued with the angel, what do you mean? God wouldn't choose me. I'm down here with weak. What are you talking about? And she said, no mighty man of valor. He wasn't a man of valor. But he would become that. Yeah. And a lot of God has called you, God called everybody in this room to do something. God don't make a mistake. God don't go by your background. That's right. Your background is your preparation for your present and your future. Give me a challenge and say, well, if God called me, I'm going to lay out a fleece. Come on here. I'm going to go lay down. And if God called me, when I come back, if the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, I know only God can do that. He went and laid his fleece out, went and laid down. Sure enough, when he came back, the dew had wet up the fleece and the surrounding ground was dry. But that still wasn't enough. Some, like some of us, is hard-headed. Don't ask God again, well, wait a minute, I'm going to do the reverse. I want the fleece to be dry and the ground to be wet. Then that came back, fleece was dry, ground was wet. What am I saying? Some of y'all, God done showed you 30 different ways that he'll be with you. 
He done walked you through trials and tribulations. He done made a way out of no way. And you still don't believe God is with you. I come to anniversary of St. Paul to tell you, quit testing God and stand up and be what God is calling you to be. Gideon then took his calling and started leading the Israelites. By then he was convinced, he knew that God was with him. So he didn't question what God said. But the question is, are you ready to serve? Are you ready to go up against the Midianites? Are you ready to go? In my situation, I'm on my way to Atlanta and meet the Vice President. We got to deal with this whole crisis of an election. Can't believe that a black man had 31 felony convictions. He didn't be in the race. Nine. But you may not have to deal with the election. You got to vote. But you may be dealing with something in your life. But are you ready to serve? No matter what you've been through, are you ready to be of service? Well, if you are ready of service, Let's go through the test. Gideon was told by God, take all your folk. Got 22,000. You think you got a lot of folk? Let's see. Out of those that have come forth, are those ready to serve? Everybody want a title in church, don't want a function in church. Preaching, You want to be the head of something, but don't want to do nothing with it. I know preachers, that's one reason I like brother. Get all intoxicated with their crowd and their titles. Drive down Fulton Street, see a little storefront church, 20 seats, Pope Archbishop so and so. Yeah. Titles, but no function. Reason brother was ready to serve, he came here, built schools, took care of housing. He didn't come in here. He didn't come here teaching you just how to shout, but teach you how to serve somebody. Come on, man. God said, you got too many, 22,000. Let's move. He moved them to another level. Only 10,000 then. Lost 12,000. Now we ready to battle. He said, no, not yet. Take them down to the wall. I want those that uh, get on the, uh, get down and lap walk like a dog. Separate them over here. The rest put them over here. Most of them got on their knees. That's proper Christians. That's ones that have to be seen. That's ones that you gotta cover. That's ones that look at their watch doing service. Put them over here. I want the ones that get down and lap water like a dog. When you lap water like a dog, you don't care who's looking at you. You don't care what they say about you. You don't care how they backstab you. You got your face down. You come ready to say it. I'm glad God prepared me for service. That's why I don't care who the president is. Uh, is. I'm going to do what I got to do. They talk about me, my TV show, radio show, but they don't talk about what I come from. I grew up right here in Brownsville. Daddy left when I was 10 years old. Mama raised us on welfare with food stamps. My job was the first in the 16th to stand by the mailbox in our big building to make sure nobody broke in and took the welfare check. I used to walk mama to the subway. She'd be going downtown to scrub floors as a domestic worker. But on them walks, she told me, don't worry where you start in life. Worry where you're going in life. And if God be for you, there's more than the whole world against you. She told me that if you believe God would make a way somehow, and I 
come by this anniversary to tell you there is a God that will make a way out of no way. I don't care what I've been through. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. He been food when I was hungry. He been water when I was thirsty. He's my rock, my sword and shield. My will, my will, my will. In the middle of the wheel, he's the lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. But through it all, through it all, through it all, I, 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 learned, I, learned, I learned to trust in Jesus. But sometimes in the midnight hour, when my phone stops ringing, when the doorbell quiets down, I go out in my living room all by myself and I sing my song. I can't sing for anniversary service. I can't sing for pastor's birthday. But I sing. Because I'm happy, oh, I say because I'm free. His eyes, his eyes, his eyes is on the sparrow. 